The point of our game is for the spaceship to survive while random space debris gets thrown at it. I've included three items of various shapes in this example, but you can add more easily enough. As long as the player stays alive, their score ticks upwards, so clearly it's going to take some quick movement to get the highest score. To add enemies and time to the game, we need to declare three new properties. First, we'll say var possible enemies, all the things we'll throw at the player, equal to an array of a ball, a hammer, and a TV. Three obviously well-known pieces of space debris. We'll have a game timer, which is a new type, timer, and we'll make it optional. And finally, var is game over is false by default. So this possible enemies array contains the name of the three images that can be used as space debris in the game. Is game over? This is a boolean, set to false by default because the game's active. But the second type, the timer, that's a new type, and it's used to create actions that run after a set period of time, either once or repeatedly. Creating a timer takes five different parameters. How often it should fire, who to tell when it has fired, what method to call when it fires, any context you want to pass along, and whether it should repeat or not. Now we're going to create a new enemy on a regular basis, so we'll make a new scheduled timer with a repeat interval of 0.35. So we'll create about three enemies a second. We'll also make it repeat by setting that last parameter to true. So down in did move to view, we will say game timer is equal to timer dot schedule timer and we want to use this third option here time interval target selector user info repeats our time interval will be 0 0.35 so about three times a second target will be self selector with the name of a method we haven't written yet called create enemy so we'll say hash selector create enemy and that'll error for now but that's okay user info i.e any context to pass along we'll do nil and this should repeat for the whole game. So we'll say repeats true. So we'll carry on firing, calling create enemy again and again and again, three times a second. Now to create a single enemy, we've got to shuffle up the array of possible enemies we made earlier. That's this thing up here, ball, hammer, and TV. We'll then make a new sprite node from a random item in that array and place it somewhere off the right of our screen at a random Y position. Then send it flying in to the left. But this time, we're also going to set to zero its linear damping and angular damping properties, which means its movement and rotation will never slow down over time, which is perfect for a frictionless space environment. Again, we'll use per pixel collision detection and make it collide with the player. So let's write that now. We can say at obj c func. Remember, this has been called with the target selector thing, so it has to be using at obj c. At obj c func create enemy. We're going to say guard let enemy equals possible enemies dot random element. Shuffle it up and pick a random one for us. If we can't get random one, we'll do else return. And that should never happen because there's always an item in our array, but we've got to have it in there anyway. We can now say let sprite equals an SK sprite node using the image name initializer, passing in that enemy. And we'll do sprite position is equal to a CG point X of 1200, so safely off to the right edge of our screen. Remember, the right edge is 1024. And a Y is going to use int.random in the range 50 through 736. So a nice wide range across the Y. We'll add child that sprite to put it in our game scene. For physics, we can say sprite dot physics body is an SK physics body using the same texture initializer than before. So we'll say texture is sprite dot texture what's on wrap and sprite dot size and sprite dot physics body uh, question mark dot category bit mask is one to make it collide with the player. Next we'll give it a good hard shove to the left by saying sprite dot physics body question mark dot velocity, so the speed it's moving, we're going to say is a CG vector equal to the X of minus 500 and the Y of zero. 
to push it so it's moving very, very hard to the left at a constant rate because we're in space. Then we'll say sprite dot physics body question mark dot angular velocity is five. Give it a constant spin so it'll spin through the air as it's moving. Then sprite dot physics body question mark dot linear damping is zero and sprite dot physics body question mark dot angular damping is zero. So linear damping controls how fast things slow down over time. So we're giving this thing a push with its velocity. This will make it slow down never. It'll never slow down. It'll carry on going at minus 500 for its entire lifespan. This thing will give it some spin, so it spins through the air as it flies. This thing will make it never stop spinning. It'll carry on spinning at a constant rate. Now these two, linear damping and angular damping, have higher values than zero by default to simulate friction in the air. Of course, we are in space. We're in a vacuum here, so there is no damping for these two values. So let's give it a try again. Hopefully we should see lots of debris appear thanks to our create enemy method being called three times a second. So spinning balls, spinning hammers, spinning TV sets. Perfect. Oh, hit our player. <laughs> Off screen we go. Fantastic. There we go. Okay. So now that lots of debris will appear, we need to make sure we remove their nodes once they are invisible. In this game, that means removing nodes from the scene once they are effectively useless, because they've passed the player. This will be done using a check in the update method. If any nodes beyond X position minus 300, we'll consider it dead. And minus 300 is there because that's just a very big number that's bigger than all the sprite sizes. It's definitely off screen by that point. The update method's also a good place to make our score increment all the time. All we need to do is check whether is game over is still false and add one to the score if so. So we'll find our empty update method down here. And we'll say for node in children, if node.position.x is less than minus 300, i.e. very much off screen, node.remove from parent. Then after that loop, we can say if not is game over, score plus equals one. And with those two small changes, I'll press command R again, build and run the code. This game should be coming together slightly. And our score fly upwards now. And as nodes go off the screen, you can see this node count go up and down, hopefully. It stays around 13 or 12, or 11 that time briefly, because nodes are created and removed constantly now. 